I also have a question about Rhett Paladin, specifically, yeah, yeah, specifically the zealotry talent. On paper, it sounds good, but in practice, I feel like it kind of clashes with both our mastery as well as the divine purpose talent. Because if we pop zealotry and we get hand of light procs, it's effectively reducing, you know, how many crusader strikes we can generate, as well as while zealotry is active, any holy power we get from divine purpose is kind of wasted. So do you think that currently that design is kind of clashing and is there any intent to reevaluate, you know, zealotry as a talent? We're still looking at it. Um, there are some problems that, like you've mentioned. Uh, some people try to claim zealotry isn't a DPS increase at all. We're a little confused by that. But um, one change we made recently is you can activate zealotry with three holy powers required, but it doesn't burn the three holy powers. So you start immediately with being able to, to use those three holy powers. You have to wait to build up again before you can use it. But, it's also off the GCD now. Right. So but if, if it's... If it's not feeling like it's good enough or doesn't quite work right, we'll certainly make more polished changes. Like, like one simple change might be, say, divine purpose procs generate three holy power while it's active, right? If we needed to make some additional change to make it better. I, I also wouldn't necessarily say that they clash with each other. As long as zealotry is still a good button to push and talents like divine purpose or stats like mastery are desirable on their own, the fact that, you know, when one is up, the, the value of the others is lessened isn't necessarily problematic. It's no different than, say, a combat rogue who has talents and things that increase energy generation, and also an activated ability, Adrenaline Rush, that gives them massive amounts of energy. When one is in effect, the other is less valuable, but they're both very, very good in their own right. All right, thank you. Hey, how's it going? I'd like to start by saying that I've been playing a druid since day one, and I love it. I play all four. I actively switch be between all four roles that it plays, so I've seen all different walks of life. I played Resto when Innervate was the final talent. Um, so my question here is, there's pretty much two groups of druids on the forums right now. There's those that are complaining about the tree change. I'm not going to ask you about that because obviously you can't please everyone and you're just trying to change the mechanic. That's fine. So my question is the second group, those that were curious about the change to nom nom nom. So, <laughs> So this is the first, we actually just made a new minor glyph that'll let you have the old tree form back. So, so if you really want to look like old grandma tree, you can, you can do that. Um, I personally love Nom 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 too, but <laughs> these guys all told me we had to change it, so. Why, why, why the change though? Like, understand, like something with, with tree form, that's a change in mechanics. So there could be reasons for, there could be reasons not, but Nom 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 doesn't hurt anybody. Blood in the water makes sense. It, I can understand it, but, but why the change? It, it, it's, it's, a, it's an internet trope that a year from now will be less funny and three years from now will embarrass us. So it's, <laughs> it's, it, it just it was going to get dated in a hurry. So. Right. It just wasn't consistent with all of our other talents. We don't really name them after pop culture kind of things usually. So that was just mainly the reason why we changed it. It's kind of like a temporary thing we usually do when we're in develop like alpha developer stage we just name things silly things just uh because we haven't thought up the name for it yet so that that's why it was named that blood in the water is a good name too i mean nom 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 is better shark attack thank you very much <laughs> um hi uh i was gonna say in regards to in-game raids uh end game raids at the end of cataclysm um I, I'm not going to uh, say anything because whether you're DPS, tank, healer, it doesn't matter on w what your class can do. It just comes down to whether you're skillful at your class. But my main question was um, for Death Knights. I mean, I've experienced a lot of prejudice as a tank. People automatically just kick me off the raid or even instance. I was wondering if you're going to make them more viable to uh, end, end game raids because for Cataclysm. Because, I mean, like, j just out of curiosity. I, I don't know, my guild used a Death Knight tank. It, they kind of have a bad rep because we let you start at level 55. So people who don't know what they're doing can get there in a hurry, and, and, and so you're kind of competing with that. But there's a lot of really good Death Knights. There's an awesome one in my raid group that's fantastic. So it, it varies a lot. And you like, just got to get a good rep. And consolidating the primary tank and talents into a single tree for Cataclysm allows us to ensure that that particular type of Death Knight has a very diverse skill set and the tools that I think are going to be very successful in high-end rating. I think the self-healing mechanic through Deathstrike and the Mastery Absorb Shield and their various cooldowns 
should make them very well suited to be a main tank for any raid. Hi, how's it going? Uh, my question was about uh, uh, feedback loop mechanics, um, the old warrior regenerate, rage generation, um, sword spec, wind fury, those are all tend to be nerfed and removed as the game progressed. Um, the new one right now is runic empowerment. It seems to be kind of the same kind of idea. Um, how are you gonna make sure that it doesn't get overpowered to the point that you're gonna probably remove it and nerf it again? Runic Empowerment has a feedback element to an extent, but I don't think it's going to reach the numerical problem that the original Warrior Rage Generation system posed, for example. It's mainly there to add randomness and variety to the Death Knight rotation layered on top of their existing static rotation. Uh, Runic Empowerment is designed the way it is in that it gives you, it, it can only recharge a fully depleted rune, and so it's not gonna interfere with your existing rotation. It just gives you additional resources to use along the way. Thank you very much. Hi. Uh, I have a question about feral tank jewelry. Uh, essentially, we are either competing against the other tanks for suboptimal stats, or we are competing against four other DPS classes for, again, suboptimal stats. I mean, yeah. we can have agility, but no avoidance. Um, agility is avoidance. Yes, but, but, but then again, strength and dodge gives them uh, mitigation and avoidance, and we don't have mitigation from agility anymore. What, one of the nice things that happens with how we change some of the stats and items in Cataclysm is um, the amount of stamina on a rogue leather piece, or what would be a rogue neck, and the amount of stamina on a tank neck are now the same number. So that tank piece isn't really as much additional survivability in the stamina point of view as it used to be. And since the druid is being tuned around, you're going to have agility, you're gonna get crits to activate Savage Defense. You're gonna have more attack power so Savage Defense blocks more damage, and that's what their, their core model's around. There's, not, there's gonna be less variation between that, and we can just assume you're always gonna have that rogue-style item and balance accordingly. Um, so you really shouldn't, ideally, you shouldn't want that tank to at all anymore. You should actually literally want rogue stuff. Now, on the competition with, other, with uh, the DPS, yeah, you're competing with DPS. Uh, a lot of people have found it hard to gear up a cat and a bear spec at the same time for exactly that reason because they have to steal from the rogues twice. But usually you can steal from them once. It's, it's the second time that they get angry about it. Uh, but what then, what about jewelry, or uh, uh, gemming? Because I mean, we have to switch gems or we steal it twice. Yeah, it's really, it's gonna be difficult to have both specs at full, up, full optimal. So like, I know a lot of people do bear and balance for exactly that reason, because it's hard to get two sets of rogue gems. Uh, and am I ever gonna be able to use my racial war stomp? Ever? Every other tank can use it, but I can't. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> okay. Torn racial wars can use the racial wars. Oh. Bear stomp. Shape Bear stomp. Oh, right. Cat stomp. First off, I want to thank you for the DPS increase in Arms Warrior. I love playing Arms Warrior through vanilla, BC, and then I hated it in the beginning of vanilla. It just kind of went <laughs> crap, but I'm glad you guys brought it back in line with Fury. I don't want to run around with two big swords in my hands. I want one big frickin' axe, and I want to cleave the crap out of everything. Arms Warriors representing. My actual question, though, is at the beginning of the patch, when you guys first implemented it, or you were playing with it on the test server, um, were you surprised at how little threat generation was for warrior tanking, let alone when it initially hit? You guys went from 45% defensive stance to 100, up to 200%. Tanking in ICC, I still have an issue trying to keep the AOE going. I feel like I constantly have to hit Ren Thunderstomp, Ren Thunderstomp. And, and, and um, is there any way uh, that you guys are going to change that or, or give another AOE threat mechanic or, or something of that nature? Uh, first off, with regard to the actual numerical bonuses on the threat modifiers, it's pretty much the same in current live and Cataclysm beta as it had been. It's just that we got rid of a lot of the passive threat reducers that people had and had the talent into because there really wasn't anything particularly interesting about that. In 3.3, for example, a DPS class might deal 100 damage and generate 70 threat, and a tank might deal 100 damage and generate 200 threat, such that the tank was generating triple the threat of the DPS class. 
Now those numbers are 100 and 300 respectively, but it's still triple. What was the thought behind taking the heroic strike threat away? So I got constantly got feedback about people with carpal tunnel syndrome on, on heroic strike, just hashing heroic strike constantly. And we really wanted to end that. Um, I was really trying to find a good balance on heroic strike because it, it is a big, important rage dump in the sense that you've got extra rage, you've got to have a way to shovel it out. Um, but it feels really crappy on the down next swing thing that it was doing. So making it instant, giving a four second cooldown, but its own separate cooldown really, personally I think solved all of the issues. It'd be the same treatment to Maul and Cleave, but there were, it feels now like an ability that just didn't feel right anymore is gonna feel a lot better in the future, at least to me. Okay, thanks. Good afternoon, my guild is Phoenix of Greymane, 16th US, open recruitment. First of all, let me say thank you very much for fixing Shadow Priests in time for 3.3. My uh, Realm First Light of Dawn kill thanks you. Uh, my question is about discipline, however. Last week, I think I dodged one Shadow Trap, cast a Power Word Shield, and Arthas fell over. And while it's awesome to have such a powerful ability, a Priest is a diverse healing class, and I feel like the powerful ability uh, Power Word Shield right now pushes all that off the table, and I end up spamming nothing but that. Do you have any plans to diversify that in the future? I think the question was, uh, you spam Powered Shield and, uh, what was the question, I'm sorry? I didn't hear it. Powered Shield, while amazing, uh, prevents you from using Palm or POH or Renew or other things the way that you used to have to, and a Priest is a great class to play because of that diversity. Powered Shield, while amazing, the way it is right now, prevents that and it feels a little single-minded. I was wondering if you were gonna diversify that in the future in any way. Oh, right, right. Well, this is probably on live, I would think. This is, this is kind of a numbers thing, really. It's just like, what's the mana cost for the spells and what's the mana, mana cost for healing, I guess. Um, in beta, the idea is that you're not, it's not supposed to be sustainable, that you could just chain powered shield everything and that you have to make decisions between your spells. Um, it's, but yeah, that's not really reflected on live currently, which kind of sucks. It's also a reflection of the way healing worked in Lich King and the way it necessarily won't work in Cataclysm. In a world where everyone is at 100% health essentially all the time, and if they drop down for a split second, they're top back off immediately, the proactive ability of absorb shields is just fantastic because there's no overhealing in a world where there's tons of overhealing otherwise. If your entire raid, however, is hovering at two-thirds health, you probably just want to heal them instead of pre-shielding them. And at that point, you will use those other spells that you feel have been neglected. Thank you very much.